Welcome back and good morning. Well, we need more women in politics, but amid allegations of sexual assault, reports of harassment, sexist insults directed towards women, why would anyone want to subject themselves to a workplace like that? Yeah, to discuss this morning, we're joined by Annika Wells, the first MP in the Southern Hemisphere to have twins in office, and Lysia Heath, the CEO of Women for Election Australia. Thank you both for coming on the program. Annika, you are fresh out of maternity leave. You're juggling twins. You've got a four-year-old and a highly demanding job. What's your advice to women considering a career in politics, of all things? Well, I think you've just got to show up, know your stuff and don't back down. And there's a lot of terrible, terrible news coming out of Canberra at the moment. I know that and, and we've got to fix it. But that is 100 nights a year for me. And the other 265 nights a year is just serving the community that I, that I love. And that's really, that's really addictive, getting those local wins on the ground. You know, when you can get someone like a whole year's worth of back pay from Centrelink or some, mm. you know, some older lady's been having problems with the NBN and you can call up the NBN and say, I will meet you in Shirley's front yard tomorrow and get it yeah. sorted. So yeah. I think what I would say to women is it's not all bad. <laughs> very, very no. good. Can be reporting. Yeah. It certainly can be. Um, Annika, I, I've just got to say, I, I've tried many times to bring my baby on television and, and that's just one baby and they don't behave like that. How on earth are you doing this with twins and they're happy and content? What, what's your secret? And in Parliament as well. <laughs> well, well, let's ask at the end of the segment. We'll see how okay. we all go, I think. <laughs> Well, this is just this is just our this is just our life. This is what life looks like every hour yeah. for us. You know, not just um, divisions in Parliament. I will say though, we um, I had them with me in the pram. One was asleep, and um, we got caught in the lift when a division was called. And I was um, I knew that someone had got named, which means um, kicked out of Parliament for 24 hours for right. bringing a coffee into the chamber several years earlier. And I had an entire double pram, so I was just having <laughs> absolute kittens about bringing it onto the floor of the house. For a vote, but um, you know, my colleagues surrounded me, walked me in. Um, we immediately discovered that it's not very um, pram friendly. There's steps down, you know, to the mm -hmm. seats in the house, and it was fine. Everyone, you know, they they loved it. Everyone was happy to see them. Everyone was was so supportive. And if, if us doing that prompts some conversations about how else we could make Parliament a bit more friendly, then that's a good thing. Well, I think that was such a, a, a powerful Fantastic. image. Did you feel empowered at that moment as well? I, I knew it was an important moment because I had so many mums get in touch with me about um, the fact that, you know, that I've had the twins in office and, and that I'm doing it and that they feel like one of them you know, is in there. Um, so I knew it was going to be important for everyone else. Like I said, I was having kittens about it. But um, <laughs> the, the moment that my colleague showed me some, some support and some love and, and, and one of my colleagues said to me, you are caring for your babies. You have every right to do that in your place of work. Sort of got me through the door and actually made me well up a little bit. Um, mm. And I think that's probably the experience that women don't see so much of, you know, when they see what people shouting at each other at the six o'clock news in question time. They don't yeah. see all of the, the camaraderie and support that parliamentarians offer one another. Mm. They're beautiful children, I've got to say. Um, do you reckon the issues that, uh, that we're seeing unfold in Parliament would be mitigated to some degree at least if there were more women in the ranks? Uh, yes, and I think even more specifically, I think we need more caregivers in the ranks because the people who we most need to hear from at the moment in Parliament are the people who find it hardest to get there. You know, like 100 nights a year in Canberra is not an ask that many families could do if you've got little children, sure, if you're caring yeah. for your elderly neighbour, cool. if you've got other commitments. So I think we need to make Parliament more flexible so that we can get those caregivers in because when you, know, you hear that the Minister might be completely um, reforming the NDIS, we need people who actually use the NDIS every day to tell us how to make that policy make that policy better. And I think the other point is that when you are caring for little children um, or, or other commitments like, you know, ageing parents, you don't have the time or the energy to be cavorting about on desks or any of this other debaucherous behaviour that you hear about going on in, in Parliament. You know, none of, my, none of my friends who are working parents have the time or energy for that kind of thing, so I think that would help the culture as well. Yeah, yeah. good point. Lysia, good morning to you. Now, there's recent calls for the Liberal Party to morning. adopt gender quotas. I want to get your view on that idea. 
Yeah, look, I, I, have, I have a couple of views on this. The, the short answer is yes. <laughs> look, I think um, quotas have been proven to work, not just here, but overseas. There's many research that shows how, uh, whether it's from the States or Canada or, or the UK, about uh, targets not working to bring up gender or culture parity in our parliament. So the short answer is yes. The longer answer is um, we don't have 25 years to necessarily make it work. And gen gender quotas take some time to feed through. Think about all the MPs in Canberra right now. You can only lift the number of women in Parliament House if a man steps down, retires from a seat. Then a woman can come up and through time you, get, you can increase the number of women closer to gender parity. But in terms of quotas being the solution to what's happened in the last couple of months in Parliament, I think there's quotas, yes, for the long term. A lot more is needed in the short term to improve what we've seen in recent months. <laughs> Lysia, um, just a quick one for you. Many, many women, quotas aside, are scared or turned off a career in Parliament. What's your message to them? Yeah, look, it's been very easy to be repulsed in the last few weeks. I, I totally get that. But I do want to balance that out with what the experience that's happening with Women for Election Australia at the moment, which is we have never had a greater increase in traffic to our website, to our social media. I can't launch a training event without it being sold out so far year to date. We have a waiting list for our training courses that we're having trouble servicing. So, so while I get that a lot of the commentary is, well, surely people, are, uh, women are being turned off at a higher rate than ever. That is not our experience. Uh, in, in, in fact, it's the opposite. What's been happening is I think we've hit some, do I hesitate to say, tipping point where, where women have gone, OK, I understand now. It is not going to get better unless I get involved. And it doesn't just have to be in Canberra. It could be at state or it could be at local council as well. There's many roles for public service uh, to get into public office and we encourage through our training um, all the knowledge that you need to step forward into those roles and make what is oh. currently a very opaque well, process yeah. more transparent. Yeah, well, Lysia, you warm my heart with that news. I'm yeah. so glad this Women for Elections, if you, if you get on board, go to the website, have a look if you want to get involved. Um, and Annika Wells, you uh, just hats off to you. You're yeah. quite an incredible woman and enjoy those beautiful twins of yours. Yes, thank you both. <laughs> thank you for joining Thanks us. For I, know it's a, I know it's a stretch juggling the twins and doing TV at the same time. I couldn't even do one baby and juggle TV. So, you know, I don't know how you do twins. Anyway, well done.